Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth and talk about some people. But I tell y'all, Kim, girl, when I tell y'all, Kim, and <laughs> this is the thing, right? I guess whenever you in love, you in love, and girl, on Mad Day, girl, it's a Mad Day. Because when I tell you, Kim and Crow a ghetto, girl, ghetto. Yeah. So listen to this. Kim Zosiak wants divorce from C Croy Beerman dismissed as they still have S-E-X, baby. Make sure your breakfast has settled be before reading this one. Kim oh, this is according to Yahoo.com. Um, Kim Zosiak, I'm going to put the link to the article in the description box. I'm not going to read everything, but just the important parts. So Kim Zosiak doesn't want to get divorced uh, anymore. Because yeah. girl, she ain't got no money. She ain't got no money. She don't know how she's going to take care of them kids. Because Quad is just kept crying. Ain't got no money either. So Kim is like, girl. Kim said, girl, we might as well just be Robin and Juan. Right? And just try to work it out together. Stay for the kids. Because if Kim leave Croy and Croy ain't got no money, then girl, it's not going to work out the way Kim thought it was going to work out. So girl, let me just stay with this man. And Kim really don't want to take care of them kids. I really think that Croy take care of those kids and Kim doesn't. I don't know why I think that, but I just think it. In fact, she has filed court documents in, a, uh, in an attempt um, to get Croy Beerman's divorcing filing dismissed, claiming that the two are still having plenty of SEX. Um, TMZ got a hold of documents from the Real Housewives of Atlanta alum. Um, Kim says that she and Croy last had sex on September the 7th, just a couple of weeks after Croy filed for a divorce the second time on August the 24th. Um, frustratingly, Kim may be onto something. Listen to this, Steve. Come on. If the parties have sexual intercourse, then the, requir the, uh, then the requirement of being legally separated is no longer met. Um, the Meriwether and uh, Tharp LLC divorce team in Georgia um, Atlanta writes on their website, if the parties have sex after the petition is filed, then technically they have not remained in a true state of separation since the filing. While it may not be, while it may not be common, I have seen judges dismiss a divorce action and make the parties refile the case under these circumstances. Girl, ain't that a mess? So, girl, y'all y'all be out here, girl. So, basically, in Georgia, right? In Georgia, if you file for divorce, but you still a hunching, <laughs> then, girl, you may have to refile because, girl, how you filing for divorce, how you want to separate, how you want to break up, but you still getting booty, <laughs> right? You still doing a naked tango. Girl, but you in my face at the courthouse talking about, girl, we want to break up, but you still, girl, but girl, y'all go home, honey, y'all throwing each other against the wall. Girl, hopping on it and doing a full split. That's interesting. Um, Croy claims that Kim's love for gambling has led to mountains of debt, and he's ready for, he's ready to leave the crazy train. Well, girl, I can't tell. Girl, they say, you, Kim say you still crawling in between her legs. I guess, girl, when you get a look, I guess when you start getting a little hot between your legs, honey, the closest thing to you. And if Kim is right, girl, if you got some coochie or a little, you know, a little peen in the house, I guess why not, right? Um, for her part, Kim has maintained that things will work out. She continues to wear her wedding ring, and sources from the camp say that the marriage is being worked on. Y'all know Kim and Croy. I do not see it for Kim and Croy. Um, you know, I also read that, girl, the people are saying over at Real Housewives of Atlanta that there's not, um, that Kim that Kim ain't coming back to the show. So, girl, we might as well go ahead and let that go. I wouldn't mind seeing Kim on the show just so I could see her get talked about and drugged by Kenya. I know some people say Kenya ain't got no room to talk because she's going through what she's going through with her man. But I wouldn't mind seeing Kim getting drugged by uh, Candy and Kenya quite as it's kept. So yeah, I'm going to put the link to the article in the description box so y'all can read it if you want to. That's the latest tea on Kim Zosiak and Croy Beerman with their ghetto selves, girl. 
Kim said, girl, I'm still backing it up on. I'm still backing this old boonchy cat. Girl, this, this old school boonchy cat on him. He's trying to break up with me. <laughs> Kim said, he's trying to, you trying to break up with me and I'm still giving you some coochie? No. Absolutely not. Kim said, you cannot break up with me when you still getting my coochie. I guess, girl. Um, J. Cole shares the letter Colin Kaepernick wrote to the New York Jets GM asking to join the team's practice squad. Girl, I feel so bad for Colin. <sighs> I'm not reading this letter because it's long. I'm just going to read the the what the, what the Shade Room wrote. Um, it has been some years since Colin Kaepernick has been part of the NFL organization. However, the love and interest in the game is definitely still there. On Tuesday, J. Cole shared a letter that Colin wrote to the New York Jets general manager Joe Douglas last week. Cole shared that Colin was reluctant to uh, let him share the letter publicly. However, Cole says he believes the people in all the organizations should know the truth about how hard he works and how much he still wants to play. In the letter to, to, to Douglas, Colin expresses interest in coming in and leading the organization's practice squad. I would do this with the sole mission of getting your defense ready each week. If I were able to fill this role for the team, I believe this allows for multiple things, Colin listed, uh, said Colin as he listed the possibilities. Um, as many uh, of you know, Colin Kaepernick last played in, in the NFL in 2016 where he was still a part of the San Francisco 49ers. After moving past his lawsuit against the league, Colin has been adamant about uh, his interest in still playing. Honey, Colin, I don't know what Colin, you know, girl, Colin deserves his flowers because Colin really, you know, Colin put his livelihood on the line um, to try and bring, to try to shed a light on police brutality. And I don't know if it's working out for him or not. Do y'all think that it's working out for Colin? I don't know. Um, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that he ever, I don't think that he ever, I don't think that he did not want to play. Let me say this. I think it's just like with any job, right? You can, you, you can, think that your job needs improvement, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to work at your job. You know what I'm saying? I think that Colin wanting to shine a light on police brutality, somehow that kind of started this, oh, he's against the NFL and he don't want to work. And I don't think that's what it really was. I might just think that he was using his platform and it just so happened that he did it at his job. And that is, I think, like the stuff just kind of got mixed up in. Y'all, y'all correct me if I'm wrong though. But I think I don't know. I don't. I don't want to be negative, Nancy. But all I can say is I hope Colin got his money saved up. I hope he did some good investing. Um, I hope that he um, is living a very low-key life because I don't know if Colin is coming back to the NFL ever. So I don't know. I just hope that he has done good with his money. Because it's not looking too good. But if he pops up one day on the NFL team, honey, shout out to Colin. How old is that man? Let's see how old is Colin Kaepernick. Oh, let's see. Cause he ain't no young, he ain't no young, he ain't no young whippersnapper. He's 35. Is that too old? Is that old to be playing football? That's not old in real life, but is that old? When you out there, girl, running, or running up and down the field, getting your ass whooped, girl, getting banged up by, girl, some big ass 24 year old, girl, that's a difference. <laughs> In real life, 35 ain't old. Girl, sports, girl, you damn near the old man on the field. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? I don't know, sure. But shout out to Colin. Shout out to, shout out to Colin. Shout out to Colin. 
What else is going on? I don't want to talk about that. I don't care. But listen, I don't care about no Taylor Swift or that white man or a girl or that black lady. I don't care. Um, let's see what's going on on Baller Alert. Girl, I might. We could talk about. I don't feel like talking about that either. Girl, love and hip hop, the round table. Girl, we don't care. You know, let's talk about her for a little quick second. So, Cassie. <laughs> Y'all know Cassie used to be with Puff Daddy, right? And before Cassie got her soul sucked out of her, she took the money that she had saved up, girl, and girl, she went and got her a white man. You want to see baby Cassie pulled a stunt? Y'all know Cassie. Y'all know they say Cassie live in the Hollywood Hills. I don't know how true that is, but girl, we know the Hollywood, Hollywood Hills ain't cheap. Cassie, girl, had one song. Girl, it's me and you. I've been thinking. I think I want to make a move. Make a move. Tell me how you like it. Tell me how you like it. Uh-oh. Girl, that's Cass. That's exactly how she sounded. Um, And I think she was in a movie or two. But girl, she did that much. Not to be living in no Hollywood Hills. Quiet as this kept Cassie. Be, Cassie, Cassie she be living in the same apartments I live in. <laughs> no tea, no shame. My apartments are cute. Girl, they ain't Hollywood Hills cute. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, y'all know Cassie is married to that white man, Alex Fine. That's his name. Now, Alex, I've been laying low on you, <laughs> but I'm about to have to get into your ass just a little bit. Because what you did low key had a homophobic undertone to it. So, we're going to talk about it. All right. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Remember when Puff Daddy received an award? I think at the BET Awards, and he gave a shout out to Cassie. And even I think I recall myself getting down here to the World Wide Web, and I was like, "Girl, what did Cassie have to do with this?" <laughs> Girl, like, why are you bringing Cassie up? I felt like it, Puff Daddy was being messy. I did. I felt like he was being messy because there was no reason for him to bring up Cassie. Girl, you could have just got out there. Th you could have just thanked your kids, thank Kim Porter, thank your girl, Young Miami, your mama, Biggie, and then sit your ass down, right? But I felt like he was partly being messy. So I remember, I think Alex kind of got online and threw some shade. And then when he came out with that song, I Gotta Move On. Alex came out and he said this, happy pride to all my LGBTQ plus friends. And then he put attached, he put a link. He put attached is a charity that helps people who are in, who are in the closet and got to move on. And he put in all caps, got to move on, because that was the name of that song that Puff Daddy came out with, with Bry, uh, Bryson Tiller, along with other resources. Now, the other day, Puff Daddy was down to the Breakfast Club. I did not watch the interview. I'm assuming he said something about Cassie. I don't know. But Alex came out and he said this. He's old and fruity. And he put a rainbow. <sighs> Let me say something. Have we heard Scuttlebutt of Puff Daddy being one of the, the kids? Well, at this point, girl, he, girl, he uncle. Have we heard of uh, Puff Daddy being one of the aunties and uncles? Yes, I, I told y'all. See, I keep telling y'all I'm true to this, girl. I'm I'm Wendy Williams in a in man form, okay? Because I've been, girl, a hot topics a hot topics queen, okay? I remember this story from back in the day. This was on XGs. Back in the day, there was a story that came out. I'm gonna put the link to the uh to the article in the description box. Exhibit the rapper was telling a story about how it was it was him, Puff Daddy, and I think Superhead. I think she goes by Elizabeth now. They went to a club, and supposedly a, a, a Exhibit said, and "This don't mean nothing. This don't mean nothing." But Exhibit said it was a punk club. <laughs> he said it was a gay club, and he was trying to figure out why did Puff Daddy take them to the gay club. Now again, I know that don't mean nothing. 
بس So it's been rumors of Puff Daddy being one of the kids. Now, ain't nobody ever came out because I guess he makes sure the check's clear. <laughs> ain't nobody ever came out and said that, girl, they've had relations with Puff Daddy. I ain't never heard no stories. So if Puff Daddy do mess with men, girl, if he doing it, then, girl, he making sure the check's clear. There's also been stories about Puff Daddy liking stuff in his booty hole. I don't know how true that is, but that don't mean nothing because you, girl, there are men out there who like to get their booty holes. Hey, come on, girl. You know, some of y'all munchers. Girl, come on, munch. They say I'm a munch. Girl, he eat it for lunch. Girl, she eat it for lunch. Because some of y'all be munching on y'all man's booty holes. Ain't nothing wrong with that, honey. But they say that uh, Puff Daddy allegedly likes to get munched on. <clears throat> I think Cassie been over there telling um, Alex all of Puff Daddy's business. I think that Cassie probably was over there. She part, she she part, she partook in some some <laughs> extracurricular activities. I think Cassie had to do some questionable things to make sure her checks kept clearing. I think that Cassie made sure that whatever money Puff Daddy was giving her, she was saving it and putting it up to the side. And I think that when Cassie got to the point where girl her youth were, was almost out the door. She hurried up and got her panties and girl, she hit, she ran for the hills and she made sure she went and got all the money she, she had saved up and she went and got that white man that had been hired to be her personal trainer because the word on the curb was allegedly Alex was brought into the picture to be Cassie's personal trainer or something like that. Now, I'm not trying to say that personal trainers don't make money because there are some, there are some, there are some so, so celebrity personal trainers out there who make a hell of a lot of money. But I don't think Alex Fine is one of them, and I don't think whatever Alex Fine doing, he making enough money for them have, for the, for them to live where they live in. So Alex Quiet is just kept the same way Kevin and Sharina was over there living off Wendy's money. Nigga, your ass over there living off Puff Daddy's money. If we just gonna all put it all out of the goddamn flow, you got a whole bunch of goddamn nerve to be talking to shit your ass is talking, and you living off Puff Daddy's money. Now, girl, we can say what we want to say about Puff Daddy supposedly being gay, but you shut your ass up. Because you getting your ass down to the end of the talking about he's a little fruity. They had a little homophobic undertone to it, and I ain't like it. Because quiet as it's kept, whatever Cassie was over there telling you, or whatever she was over there telling you today, or the other day, or a couple of years ago, that bitch was, was a part of it. Okay? So if Puff Daddy was getting his booty ate, she was probably doing it. <laughs> if Puff Daddy was, girl, getting paid, she was probably strapping on. If it was a nigga in the bedroom, she was there with him. So you can get your ass on the line talking about Puff Daddy's fruity, but bitch, Cash ain't had no problem with it. Cash ain't had no problem with what was going on. So you shut your ass up. Talking about he's fruity. He might be. That's for the other fruity to say. You shut your ass up, Alex. I ain't like it. I ain't like it. I did not like him saying that. I didn't. I didn't appreciate it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Don't say that. <laughs> now I got a side eye you. Y'all be the first ones talking about oh girl, so girl donate to the LGBTQ. Girl, you ain't got you ain't got no LGBTQ friends, girl. We heard the stories of Puff Daddy. We ain't stupid. <laughs> and Cassie ain't stupid either. I'm sure she over there. I'm sure she probably still got Puff Daddy ass still on the tip of her tongue. Tell us how it tastes, Alex. <laughs> how Puff Daddy's ass tastes. Because I'm sure whatever was going on in Puff Daddy's house, honey, I'm sure Cassie was a munch too. He's fruity. We know Cassie over there telling y'all all what was going on, but you leaving out the part what the fuck she was doing. <laughs> okay? 
So, girl, Quilas is kept. If you really want to be honest about it, Cassie, if Puff Daddy do get down with men, or if he is bisexual, I don't know. If the rumors are true, girl, Cassie, she was gay for pay, too. She did whatever she needed to do to make sure that girl, when it was time to get her panties and bras and leave, she had enough money saved up. So if, even if she had to mess with somebody who was bisexual, honey, Cassie said, I'm going to be gay for pay. <laughs> <laughs> if I got to sit here and put a strap on and peg my man, then girl, that's what I'm going to have to do. If I got to eat, if, if I gotta eat a little ass every now and again, girl, that's what I'm going to have to do. Cause I ain't got no talent. I'm cute. Girl, my beauty only gonna take me so far. I can't sing. I can't act. I can't dance. And I know that girl, with dealing with a nigga like Puff Daddy, I'm gonna age out. So Cass had to do what she had to do. Hello? <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. All right, y'all. I'm going to go do something to my head. All right, y'all. I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good night. Y'all got hot. I gotta tell y'all about my hair, girl. Y'all see, it got a little lighter, girl. It's probably gonna get light turn. I'm gonna die again. All right, I'm gone. That's all I had to say. Bye, y'all.